There we go, couldn't remember my own hotkeys there. Hello, and welcome to a complete blast from the past. This is a 20 year old game, and it's one I recently bought on GOG after having kind of been wanting to for a while and then finally thinking, you know what, why not? And it is one you can find on various abandoned ware sites as well, but the advantage of buying from GOG is it's guaranteed to work on a modern system. However, this is it. This is the, you know, the game window and this is what GOG have done to make it run on uh, modern display sizes. So it's not like it's some remaster or, or anything. This is the original game. Now there were two titles in the Imperialism uh, series. They were published by SSI and made by a company called Frog City. And I actually bought both of them together, and Imperialism 2 has a bit more going on in it, but whereas Imperialism the first runs quite nicely full screen, Imperialism 2 resizes the screen down to like 640 by 480, something like that. And on OBS, you know, when you're trying to trying to stream that, it just it, it it's mostly a black screen, and then you have like the game window up here in this corner so if i was recording it locally with like bandicam it really wouldn't be a problem but um it looks terrible on obs so i've decided to, to go with just playing the first one and i'm basically just going to see if i can remember how to play it how it works and um probably it's all going to go horribly wrong and nobody's going to watch so it'll be fine no one will see me playing anyway so it'll all be fine so Imperialism is a uh, strategy game in the same vein as some of the, um, the much more recent Paradox games, like the EU series, but like the Total War games, um, they also have the ability for you to control battles directly, but it's kind of like hex-based, turn-based battles, so... Nothing like the, the, the Total War games. And in fact, I think Shogun only came out about three or four years after this. Um, but, you know, for its time, th this was it. If you wanted a game where you could kind of have global strategy and controlling the economy and invading other countries, and then you get to control the battles as well, I don't think there was really a lot of other choices available. Although there were other, you know, hex-based um, war games made by SSI, you know, the, the Pacific General and Panzer General games are still quite famous and there's been various remakes of those, including, I think, one that got published quite recently. But this one never has been remade, and I kind of wish it would be, but I think there's enough kind of, like, successor games that it's, it's maybe fine that it isn't. Um, but none of the games have quite this combination of, of things going on. Um, you've got some like uh, Victoria 2 for, for instance which maybe have more of the, the economic side um, that this game represents but uh, when it comes to warfare in Victoria 2 that's not a particularly um, pleasing experience so and of course it doesn't have the ability to directly control battles none of the, the Paradox games do. So we're going to start a game, um, start a new game on random map, and um, we're going to go with a fairly easy difficulty because it's been it's been literally uh, decades since I played this. I mean, it's it's 20 years old. It's it's going to be over a decade since I played this. So uh, we're going to take it reasonably easy on ourselves. How's the sound level, by the way? I've I've put the music down fairly low, but. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping that it's not drowning me out completely. So we've got various different randomly generated countries. Um, the world is split into major powers and minor powers, and it's all very kind of European. Even though this is the whole world, everything is very, very European. Uh, Imperialism 2 added the concept of there being a new world, which you had to go and explore, and you could make treaties with the natives and be nice and uh, trade with them, or else you could just straight up conquer them. Um, which, even if you were trying to be nice, my memory of playing Imperialism 2 is that generally the AI would go around conquering everything, so you kind of had to conquer things as well, because there just wasn't time to build up relations. Um, so, what we'll do... Um, this purple one up here looks alright, because we've got a couple of minor nations next, next to us, and anybody that wants to come to us is going to have to build a navy to do so, whereas... Um, with these other ones, well, they've 
basically got fewer minor nations and some of them have got major nations as uh, direct neighbors. So what should we call this new land? Um, <laughs> well, that's, uh, well, my dad just built a laser. I guess I'll have to AFK for a while to make sure he doesn't set something on fire. Uh, this is, yeah, 1997 this came out, Chaser. This is, this is an old game. This is the same year that um, Theme Hospital came out, I believe. Let's call it kv Foria. Why not? If that'll fit. kv Foria, this, this grand, proud nation. You don't get to choose which... Um, like, you don't get to choose which crest you get. You just have to... You know, if, if it's in a position that you want, then you just have to go with it, basically. So let's start. Every turn has this little newspaper thing, which has been copied in various games since, where it gives you a little precy of what's happening. I, I, I think this, the, the Imperialism series, like, even if, if there wasn't a modern remake or anything like that, it's one of these ones that seems really ripe for an open source remake. But nobody's ever really tried, I don't think. And there's plenty of other older games where people have, have made open source remakes or else they've just straight up copied the game. But, um, yeah, for some reason Imperialism just, I don't know, maybe it's a bit on the obscure side. So, upheaval in government ministries. Um, I mean, this is, you know, to reflect that you've started controlling things. New ruler proclaimed. And then we've got various other kind of, uh, like, bits of flavor text. Wind scale established. Royal Bank dismisses 100, so this is the year uh, 1815, and this is, yeah, this is the entirety of the game window. It seems super cramped these days, but once upon a time, you know, this would have been the maximum screen resolution just about. So, um, we can move around with um, just moving the cursor to the side. I don't think we can use the arrow keys, and we certainly can't use the wasid keys. Uh, so that's going to be a bit awkward. We can also click on the tiny little mini-map, but it's a little bit clunky. Um, so, you've got the map with your nation and you've got all the various bits of types of terrain on your nation you've also got various um towns and cities which like every kind of territory every state has a, a, a capital or a, a town associated with it basically which is exactly the same as, as victoria does um where each each state has like a capital but there's also various small ones in victoria too uh, so you know this is this is all mine and then we go over the border to my neighbors and eventually you know I could either conquer them or we could become allies with them and have them be my little puppets um, and uh, we basically you know on this this world map is where we build all our uh, improvements and things so we start off with a prospector who gets to look for resources and uh, we also have an engineer so we can do things like build um, improvements to farms we can build uh, forestry areas, we can build mines once we uh, have that, and later on they can also build forts and um, uh, ports as well. So we'll start off with the prospector. The actual building of infrastructure is essentially free, but it does take time, and I think it's everything within one tile of, um, of a, a piece of infrastructure that actually gets um, picked up that, that gets collected as a resource essentially so all this stuff that's immediately around the capital will be but at the moment we have very little development um, I think I'll build if I build a railroad down to the south first and uh, it's going to be a bit slow development wise to begin with because actually training up more engineers and whatever does take a while so yeah we'll build it down south because we've got cattle and we've got wool there and that'll take me past this area of forest as well because we'll need to develop our logging industry i've got no idea how many people are going to tune in to watch by the way i mean this is probably a super obscure game th these days also i told a lie it does actually cost like a hundred dollars out of my uh, budget to uh, build infrastructure so um, yeah but every bit of infra infrastructure is one turn but it's i guess more that it's time consuming in terms of, of that than, uh, than it, it being particularly expensive. Now we've got our four um, kind of screens representing um, like industry 
uh, the e economy, diplomacy, and what's the other one? Transport orders. So you've, you you have to manage logistics in this game, which is not something that um, I've really seen a lot of games do since. You've also got technology, and then we've also got our controls, and we've got a little uh, in-game help thing there as well. Um, but we don't, I don't think we have any technologies available to buy at the moment. So yeah, there is a kind of a technology, not a tree exactly, but as you go through the game, new technologies become available and you have to invest in them to have them available. But we've started off with the seed drill and the high pressure steam engine, so we have basically early trains. So, um, yeah, let's take a look through and we'll see if I can remember what the heck I'm doing. So this is, this is the transport ledger. Your nation has a certain amount of uh, transport capacity. And at the moment we actually have four spare units of capacity. Um, but we're going to have to build that up because all of the stuff... I, I've talked about improving the tiles to um, uh, be able to, to collect the resources from them you then have to have sufficient capacity to transport those resources and you're going to have to basically fine-tune this this game is all about growth it's about hitting the right growth curve in order to um not get outpaced by your neighbors and you have to juggle building up a military building up your industry and also building up your transport capacity all at the same time and if you go too far in one direction it will hurt the others so this is the industry screen, and all of these things represent various bits of industry. So this is um, probably where we will be spending a fair bit of time because we've we've got a labour pool which we have to distribute in order to produce goods, and uh, we can increase uh, the labour pool through uh, not the university, uh, trade school, is it? Now that's turning okay. So you've got various grades of your labour uh, pool as well. I can't. Uh, I'm so, this is so, is it the capital? Yeah, there we go. So you've got untrained workers, trained workers, and expert workers. And the more trained they are, the more labor they contribute. So it's the capital building. So we we need to put in certain resources to get new labor available. available. And we can then kind of upgrade our labor. But again, we need investment in resources and also cash. And this is how we also make money in the game, is we make stuff and we sell it to other nations. Yeah, game resolution for Ants Aimless. Well, this this is a 20-year-old game, so yeah, I think we're doing okay with it uh, running, you know, fairly smoothly. If, if, if there was some way to, I don't know, I could maybe, oh, I don't know how I'd do that with OBS. I know how I'd do it with Bandicam, just like making it, like blowing it up a bit in terms of the, the resolution or even um, sort of stretching the resolution out a bit in uh, in the video editing, but I'm not sure how I'd do that with OBS doing it live. So yeah, you might have to squint a bit to see what's going on. But uh, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd maybe recommend having this at like full screen. <laughs> um, but this is, this is unfortunately as good as it gets. There's no way to make this bigger. There's no way to stretch this out resolution wise. So, yeah, um, so to begin with, we have, uh, do we have any labor assigned? What have we actually got in the stockpile? So you start off with a certain amount of resources and goods in the stockpile. Um, so we're going to need food, for instance, to make f canned food to, to get more labor. Um, do we have, can we right away just get more? Yeah, I think, okay, we'll do that. We'll, we'll queue up an order for two more units of untrained labor. And any, anything that you queue up now, by the way, it kind of appears next turn, essentially. So we need to figure out what we need. Well, rail yard, we'll actually, um, I think we'll get one more. Uh, th this is how you increase your, your transport capacity, basically. You're basically making trains. So we'll queue up one there. Um, what other goods do we have that we maybe want? So we'll queue up two units of canned food. Um, we can have lumber or paper. I think we'll go with lumber for now. Uh, furniture factory, that's a kind of a finished good. The, the finished goods are ones that you can um, like sell to other nations for greater profit, essentially. And two labor plus two steel makes one hardware or one armament. Um, armaments, obviously, you're going to need for 
um, the purposes of building a military. So actually we might want to make one armament for now. Um, we've actually got enough to make steel for like two turns, but we're going to need more resources or to buy more resources because we've only got I think five units of coal and uh, iron. And that's it for the uh, the labor. So the labor pool's used up for now. We've got two more next turn. You're basically going to have to to like rejig this every turn based on what you need versus uh, yeah. So this is the trade screen. Um, we don't really have anything to sell or buy at the moment because it's basically the start of the game. So we're going to leave that for now. And then we have the diplomacy screen. So basically, our immediate neighbors. Um, we need to curry favor with them. So what we can do if we click on it should be this tab If we put trade consulates in all our neighbors and they cost 500 each But this is my immediate diplomatic goal is to become the favored trading partner of these three and then eventually um, Yeah, we can get them to be a part of our empire diplomatically So we're gonna try and do that as a goal. So I think that's it for this turn. So military upkeeps cost us a hundred. So we're down on cash. KV Foria goes on a consulate spree. And I don't think there's any other anything. Like I think some of these you will see repeated, but it's a nice little bit of flavour. So nothing from the prospect of there. Uh, we'll actually build that there and then we'll get this engineer to build some some um, in uh, logging industry areas and we'll also need um, I think we'll just keep building down here because we've also got some farming areas down here and um, we've got some livestock there so those all feed into canned food and you, you need to keep increasing your labor pool steadily basically uh, so um, where are we up to now You'll be, I, th I think if you, well, if you were playing this game, we, we, the Royal We, will be swapping between these two uh, pages quite a lot so you can see what you've got coming in. So I've only got one um, bit of raw timber coming in at the moment and we need two to make one unit of lumber. So it's, it's kind of like achieving sustainability in terms of... Um, uh, we could, oh, we don't need to build any ships or anything yet, I don't think. That's the other thing, is you need to build navies and armies and things, but not at that stage yet. We've started off with a very small army. Um, I don't think we need any more rail capacity. We'll leave the steel mill going. What have we got in terms of... Uh, like, for an older game, the interface in this isn't bad. You look at some games from 20 plus years ago and uh, you, you kind of wonder how anybody managed to ever play them. Right, let's go with making one tool because I think tools are used to if we wanted to train another uh, engineer for example. Oh, we need paper for that. So, oh, that's the... Yeah, so we're gonna we're going to need... Um, actually, we could do that. We could have them produce some paper. We're gonna have some labor left over, I think. This is the, the armory, by the way. This is what you produce. Uh, yeah, so if we wanted to make a unit, it actually then takes some um, labor out of the labor pool. And some of them, the later on ones, you actually need um, there, for instance, you need uh, sort of untrained, you need a trained worker. And I think for some of them, you even need expert. Yeah, there we go. Sappers need expert workers. So they're, they're quite expensive in terms of... Um, the, the cost of, uh, like, you, you, you're pulling manpower out of the labor pool to go into your armies, basically. Um, right, so, trade orders. Um, we, we could sell some of our starting furniture just for now. I don't think we actually need the furniture for anything. Uh... 
don't think so. Possibly goes into... Um, oh, actually, no, the furniture does go into to training new workers. So maybe we shouldn't sell that starting furniture because we don't have a lot of it. Yeah, I don't have any kind of sustainability so far in terms of production. So... Um, what can we do in terms of... Uh, yeah, this is... You can basically give people grants. You can bribe them. Um, you can also give... Uh, because I've put consulates, we can actually give a 5% um, subsidy. Which will make them more inclined to trade with me. But we're not actually trying to get anything in at the moment. Um, so... We could plonk down embassies, but... I mean, you start off with embassies to all the other world powers the great nations but you have to plonk them in the minor nations so we won't do that because i think they cost like a thousand a piece they're quite expensive so let's so uh, oh, do that again and pe people growing taller which is obviously a, a very important headline where is my current well, there we go so yeah th i think the towns have like yeah they have like militia by default but you start off so it's that little, uh, tiny little tent icon there. So we've got two units of regular infantry and one heavy artillery. That's the only military that we can move around the place. So what we'll probably do once we've built up the industry a little bit more is get some skirmishes going. So, um, right, that little red line there indicates that we're using more than we're producing at the moment. And that we're probably going to run out very soon. Yeah, I've only got two timber left so we could maybe produce a bit more food I guess just so we're using up the labor pool and it's not just sitting there I can't remember where anything is shipyard food processing there we go um, we could maybe I don't think ships use manpower no I think they do imperialism too I was playing with imperialism too a little bit Reminds you a bit of the old Caesar games. Um, I mean, it's of the same era, but um, they were—I mean, they were city builders, really. If you're talking about the uh, the Sierra published ones, hell, Pharaoh um, is another one of those. Like that's that's the one that you can find most easily. But I think I've got Caesar three around somewhere as well. Those were fun games. I spent many hours with those. So, um. I mean, you do need trading ships in order to be able to conduct trade. Like, we, we haven't really done it yet, but um, how much we can bring in or sell to other nations at the moment is severely limited by the fact that we only have four trading ships. So we could. We could build, for instance, a, a, a trader or a, an Indiaman that has a, a larger cargo capacity. And I think those get later on used uh, for, like, transporting armies overseas as well. And the only two military ships at the moment we have are Frigate and uh, Ship of the Line, which are a bit more of an investment. So later on we'll need a navy as well, but for now actually having an Indiaman... Well, maybe I should just hang on to those resources. We're not really in a state where we can uh, be trading especially. Right, um... Anything else I need to do? No, I always need to tell the prospector to keep looking. So we'll have... Um, oh, okay, it's different in... Ah, I'd forgotten that's how this does it. Um, okay. Imperialism 2. Because I've played a little bit more of Imperialism 2 because I was hoping to get that to work with OBS, but as I explained at the start of the stream, that was a bit of a non-flyer. Um, in Imperialism 2, it is just everything that's one tile within a um, uh, 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 thing of me. <laughs> uh, a, a railway. But, um, yeah, no, you have to actually buy a depot. So that will give me three lumber and uh, or three wood and... Uh, Okay. I don't think we can actually improve those tiles yet. No. I can I can build limited improvements on um 
I don't think we have the technology because unlocking technology will cost cash as well. So we need to kind of build up as a trading nation before we start doing things militarily. Um, is it worth 2,000 there for three units of lumber? But we do need the lumber. I'm just trying to see the, the coverage of maybe it would be better to build the depot there. Okay, let's build the railroad down there and see what the depot coverage is because we want to get all of those bits of forest in. Um, <laughs> Xanadu, not a real place, insists Poet. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's weird, it's, it's an odd mix of um, like referencing actual things and then, like for instance, you know, Mary Shelley's book Frankenstein, and I believe this is the right period for Frankenstein. Um, but then it, it claims that... Uh, <laughs> Samuel Opius has written a poem called Xanadu. There's a bit of a reference there to, of course, uh, uh, Samuel Taylor Coleridge, who wrote um, God, uh, Kublai Khan. Was it Kublai Khan? I can't remember the name of the poem exactly, but he basically wrote it whilst high on opium or something. It was some drug, anyway. It was like Lord Noble, I don't even know. But he wrote it whilst high, uh, or after coming down from being high or something like that. So, you know, Opius... Haha, ha, we see what you did there. Anyway. Bingo, we've struck coal. Coal is very useful. We have enough mountains and things that hopefully... Uh, right, that would not cover all of... Yeah, we're going to... I think we're gonna just going to have to spend a bunch and uh, get a depot going. Because we need wood. Um, oh, okay. I actually checked the screens. So that's, that's true. Right, um, so we don't particularly need any transport capacity. We have a bunch of uh, everything. Uh, yeah, we're kind of running out of raw materials basically. Uh, is there enough cloth to be worth? Yeah, we can make some units of clothes. You can upgrade all these, by the way, the factories and everything um, as you go on. But uh, I don't think it tells you how much it's going to cost. I don't want to click on it and accidentally upgrade. So, uh, yeah, we can't make any more steel. We're about to not be able to make any more lumber. Uh, we could convert some of these lumber units into furniture. We'll do that. We'll just use that labor to turn uh, that into furniture. And I don't think there's anything else we need to do just now. It would be really nice to have either a... a Oh, actually, we need a miner. We do need a miner uh, in order to... Uh, yeah, you have a separate miner, so it's not just the engineer that... Uh, so we're going to need a miner. So we actually do have to train up a miner, which is going to cost us our only skilled labour. So we're going to do that. Because at the moment, we're just the engineer. Yeah, we, we, we need to be able to exploit any coal and iron that we find, basically. So, um, could we try and sell something? If I maybe sell like one unit each of, of, um, clothes and furniture. I think, if I remember correctly, the prices do fluctuate over time. So if you're selling a bunch of stuff, it will depress the price. And if you buy a bunch of stuff, it will increase the price. So there is a kind of primitive economy going on there but it's not anything like the the uh what's going on in uh, victoria so actually we've become the favored trading nation of two of three of our immediate numbers uh, numbers neighbors so that's not bad so there we go we actually sold and we've, we've come out with a profit for this particular turn so one miner reporting for duty um does that mean there's a new technology available? It's a little hard to tell. No, I don't think so. I think it does announce it in the newspaper when there's a new technology. So, uh, we're going to have to spend 2,000. It's quite expensive, but we need the lumber. And uh, there's the miner who will uh, build a mine, <laughs> as miners do. So, once again, let's take a look through. We can make clothes and furniture for a little while. 
Um, but we did just use up our one like bit of truly skilled labor. Um, but at the moment we've got a tiny bit of spare labor, so I don't think we'll try and replace that that labor just yet. Uh, I think we'll keep offering because we're making one per turn, and if we sell one per turn, even if we're only doing that for a couple of turns, that'll make us some decent money. You want you want these, by the way, always to be um, you know on the positive side because. The, the AI, I mean, we're on an easy difficulty, but the AI can be quite ruthless in this. Hi, have you ever gotten into, have I ever gotten into Dominion? Dominion, I'm guessing, is a game. I don't, I'm not familiar with that. Um, so my answer is going to be no. <laughs> oh yeah, I found I actually pointed this out, but on the, uh, the end of turn trade screen, you can see what you've done, but you can also see... You can actually <clears throat> see the state of the market, so you can see who's who's selling, who's buying, basically. Although I think you have to be offering or offering to buy or offering to sell uh, in order to actually get any of this information. KV Fourier Railways to offer eighth class service. If you're looking to, looking to take a train trip and can't afford the ticket, you may be in luck. Due to increasing consumer demand for cheaper rail travel, KV Fourier Railways is starting a new 8th class passenger service. Unlike 7th class, 8th class passengers will not have the benefit of roof or walls. There is some danger of passengers falling off, admits the vice president of the railway company. But we will have ropes tied to the cars to hang on to. <laughs> yeah, not entirely serious. Also, beards no longer in style. Ooh, ooh, I don't know about that. No, that's that's controversial. So, anyway. Hey, Finn Sand. I should be looking at the chat a little bit, a uh, little bit more often. Twenty-two viewers, by the way. This is uh, unexpectedly more than I was uh, expecting. Um, right. So we don't, we can't produce any more tinned food at this point. Oh, no, it's the warehouse I want. I will get the hang of which thing is which eventually. We can only sell clothes for like another two turns. Um, yeah, so we need, yeah, we just, we need all of the, the resources essentially, but we'll, 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 we'll keep selling them for one or two more turns because uh, we do need the cash. And they are quite high value items. So, we're inching our way back up to 10,000, which is what we started with. People of KV Foria have bigger brains. This is, of course, true. Anthropologist Theodore Rowland has proved that our citizens are generally the most intelligent people in the world. Using new scientific skull measurement techniques, Dr. Rowland compared fossilized skulls from all over the world with the skulls of several recently deceased anthropologists who donated their remains to Rowland's study. The size difference proved beyond any conceivable doubt that the people of our country are the most intelligent. Well, there you go. Um. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure it was this game that started that as a thing. I might be wrong, but having kind of like newspaper clippings to, to introduce. Right, we've got one more turn of, of uh, clothes production. We'll be able to produce furniture for a few more turns, but after this turn we'll have to make sure to... Um, but we'll stop offering clothes for this turn. We'll just use up the rest of the stockpile and have a little bit more terms of stockpile. Uh, we also might want to think about training up a military unit because we don't want to slip too far behind, even if it's just like a skirmisher. We afford a regular. Skirmishes are a lot cheaper, but they only have half the firepower of a regular. But it's less than half the cost, so it's somewhat cost effective. And uh, skirmishes also have better movement. When it comes to actual battles, and I don't know if we'll get as far as actual battles, but... Um, yeah, okay, we'll order a skirmisher. And then we'll actually have, like, one more labourer. But we'll also not offer furniture for the following turn. 
No, actually, no, we will offer furniture for the following turn. It's fine. So, um, yeah, metalworks need steel. We, we, <laughs> we are absolutely needing more resources uh, at the moment. Right, so the prospect has not found any more anything. I think we have to have a, a depot within range of any, like, just the fact that we've built a mine there doesn't automatically mean we get that car. We also have to have a depot. So we've sold just one furniture, so we're still making a bit. One regiment of skirmishers. I think they should appear automatically in the uh, in the capital. Um, what have we got in the newspaper this time? World's longest string record claimed. When was this game released? 1997, I believe, Max Kell. I think Imperialism 2 was either 98 or 99. So this 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 game came out a couple of years before the first of the Total War games. And I think Paradox was starting to do games around about then as well. Or was that a little bit later? No, it might have been around about then. With the first uh, the first EU games like the first Europa Universalis. Didn't Civ, like the original Civ, I don't know, did it? I don't remember. I don't remember Civ having newspaper clippings. Anyway, we were reading the thing about string, which is obviously of vital importance. Famous string saver Edward Twine <laughs> has ended a claim with the agency of statistics that he possesses the longest piece of string in the world. For 45 years, Twine has been saving string in a tightly wound ball. Each new strand has been carefully tied to the last so that the 10 foot diameter wall does in fact consist of one piece of string. The agency declined to act on the claim, releasing a statement which noted in part, the string in the ball is of unknown length and hence cannot be termed a record. If the owner agrees to unwind it, the claim may be proved. Twine has said that the ball is too large to unwind, so an impasse has been reached. <laughs> I did play Civ 1, but it was um, a CD-ROM remaster or a re-release in the... Uh, it would have been the early 2000s. Um, yeah, it would have been the early 2000s. Right, so I, I think towns automatically count as like a depot. So if I link up um, the town to the rail network, that automatically counts as a depot. So we're now transporting, or we have the capability to transport more wood and also more food. So this is us having maxed out the transport capacity and more grains fine, although really we need more cattle and uh, fish to be able to produce tinned food. Just, um, just uh, uh, grain alone is not enough, I think. But this now does mean that we're getting four per turn. So four lumber per turn means potentially that I can produce one, or, or for timber per turn means I can produce one lumber and one paper per turn, but that's not going to kick in till the next turn. So that's that's now permanent production that I've got, and I can then turn that into, for instance, making more furniture, for example. So I'll actually stop offering furniture for now. Um, the price of tools is really high, so we might offer uh, like one tool for the next turn. And uh, yeah, then we're probably going to turn to, we'll probably rely on furniture for a little while because uh, um, in fact we could even just put most of, pro most of the production into, into lumber to start with, but we we'll possibly will need to start thinking about increasing the labor pool as well at that point. Anyway, so um, how are we doing with, okay, maybe we want to think about. How much does an embassy cost? Oh, okay. Embassies are way more expensive than I remember them being. I thought it was going to be like a thousand, but it's a five thousand for an embassy. Good lord. Okay. Uh, we might also increase the trading subsidy with uh, Kununu there, or however one pronounces that uh, minor nation's name. Um, oh, it's not actually letting me. Uh, anyway, never mind. Oh, it's the information screen. I want. So yeah, the, the, I should probably try and. Uh, yeah. Oh, no, it's Chunu. I, I thought that was another N. It's kind of hard to tell on the little map. We've got uh, Imidlut and then Don Tin. So there you go. That's our neighbours that we're trying to uh, hopefully make someday our uh, part of our empire. 
And I think if you make them part of the Empire, it basically, it's the same effects as if you conquer them directly. It, it becomes your territory, exactly, uh, 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 directly, rather. So, uh, the Miner can't do anything for now, so I'll just say no order this turn. Um, the Militia uh, will set to defend the capital. So that's our military in, uh, power increased a little bit. Um, no, yes, no orders this turn. There we go. So, sold one hardware for 1200. Um, what's in the newspaper today? I did actually have said what's in the newspaper. I, I bought a Gazette earlier, but it, it was not that interesting. The Gazette isn't fun anymore. It's, it's a bit sad. Lit streets, new urban craze. Gaslit streets are becoming the rage as city councils in every capital city attempt to outdo the others. Beyond providing convenience and beauty, the lit streets are expected to, to deter city crime. Um, uh, oh. Also, the Undersecretary for Agriculture has uh, this week unveiled, um, or the Undersecretary for Agriculture and Animal Husbandry has introduced a plough with three, not two, blades. Wow. That's amazing. Underwater boat proves successful. Four Navy volunteers with two candles remained underwater for three hours in the first trial of an underwater boat. A War Department official speaking without attribution said that no immediate application for this new technology is foreseen. Um, okay. <laughs> Oh, more coal. Coal's fine. I mean, even if we only find coal, it's like, well, at that point, we, we would still maybe have to import iron ore, but it's better than having to import both. Let's take a look in the hills around... Um, I can't even read that. Yosak? I think it's the town of Yosak? I don't know. Um, yeah. So we'll set our miner mining away in preparation for when we can link those resources up. So let's take a look, see. Um, what are we actually doing for... Right, we have no steel whatsoever, but we will start to now have... Uh, well, actually, no, we won't start to have iron coming in. We'll have to link up the iron. So... Um, we could, I mean, we could pretty much have permanent furniture production basically. So we could start selling furniture every turn. But if you start selling furniture every turn, then it does tend to have the effect of, uh, like, as I've said, the price will go down. So we might have to take it off sale every so often. But anyway, if we sell one more tool and then, uh, yeah, so we'll start accumulating some cash. Industry, poor. So we're kind of falling behind in terms of industrial capacity. So we're going to need to... Um, Japanese steel. We can't introduce um, or add any transport capacity. We might have to. Um, we'll wait till no. We'll wait till we've got coal coming in ourselves, and then at that point we can start trading for iron ore. So which might take a turn or two. So uh, we've sold that. Where's the solvent at the moment? Oh, we've got that Xanadu, a not not a real place uh, thing again. Um, we've had that one as well. Matches. We've invented matches, you guys! So good. Metal canning technique boon to exploration, uh, which is basically canned foods lasts longer. There you go. Uh, oh! 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 Iron ore, that's excellent. So we can have our miner actually um, mine that. So what, what's going to happen is we're basically going to need to redistribute our transport capacity a bit. And we're going to need a depot over in the hills. Um, but that should mean that we can start our own iron and steel production. So at the moment, I mean, we're transporting more um, grain than is needed. But we're not transporting enough livestock. So we, we've got potentially three units of uh, spare capacity. But we are going to need a steel industry sooner rather than later. So we'll take tools off uh, from offer for the time being. Um, how much would it cost? Cost to build. Okay. So if we wanted to expand that factory, we'd need some iron for that. 
And if we wanted to expand this, we'd need two iron and two lumber. So we, uh, not iron, steel. So we need steel, basically. Steel is kind of going to be... Um, our military is awesome just from having built one military unit, but our industry is falling behind in the dirt. It is absolutely a balancing act, this particular, uh, this particular game. Um, oh, so it's given me a little warning because somebody else has become a favorite trading partner with one of the people I'm interested in, or one of the minor nations. Um. <laughs> Ginge might like this one. Wow. <laughs> well, that's totally why he's definitely going to unsubscribe from now. I've said that. Overeating and intelligence linked. <laughs> A study conducted by the Milo Institute reveals a strong correlation between the amount of food a person consumes and the size of the skull. This could mean that more intelligent people eat greater quantities of food, states Dr. Alexander Mecki. However, the exact relationship between skull size and intellect is not precisely defined. <laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> anyway, right, so. I think... Next turn, we should start to... We'll have to have the miner mine that, but I think the some of the resources here will start to become um, available. Actually, having said that, do we need, like, a separate... Um, ah, we do. We need a farmer, which will let us upgrade. So we actually need to... Uh, go on to where is it? Not the capital. Trade school. There we go. We need one expert labor. Okay, if we do one each of those, so we're kind of replacing what we're... Uh... So yeah, we're going to have more labour available next turn, but we're going to have to replace them with a farmer. But we've got the cash to do it, but it is taking a, 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 a big bite out of our resources. So, um, if we don't offer furniture for a turn, I guess... I, I want to have at least a couple in reserve. Uh, I also forget who was the... Yeah. Chunu again. Is it worth having an embassy with one of these places? I don't know. There's no... I think it was... It must be Imperialism 2 only, where it kind of colour codes based on your relations. You can tell how much they like you, but um, I don't think Imperialism does that. Okay, let's try establishing... Oh, it's expensive. Let's try establishing an embassy. And see how that goes. Okay, so... We lost a little bit, but that's fine. Embassy established in Imindlut. So there we go. Um... <laughs> at a recent uh, atomic theory explained at a recent lecture at the College of Immaculate Spirit, Mr. John Dalton, self-described chemist and meteorologist, spoke for three hours explaining his theory of the atom. This is, this is an actual, you know, historical, you know, um, at least I think it is John Dalton. That name rings familiar. This report drew little from the oration other than to note that these atoms must be very small as one has never been observed in the press shop. There you go. So, um, <clears throat> no, we haven't struck it lucky again. Right, do I have to, oh, I have to build a depot. I can also fortify the town. But yeah, if I want to collect any of the, the stuff here, okay, we, we will build a depot. Um, I was kind of hoping the towns would automatically provide a depot for you, but they do not. But we will get our first iron ore, and then we'll have to... Um, I think depots have to be linked by rail, so we'll have to build rail over here, and then we'll build a depot in the hills, which I think is fine. So, um, no new anything yet, but we are going to, is it university? Yes. We're going to train a farmer, and we'll sell the furniture again this turn as well. How are we doing for... 
It's worth building like an Indiaman. Oh, we don't have any cloth. So we do need some, some, I think wool or cotton. I don't think it matters which. We do actually have a little bit still in stock, so we can produce, we can use part of our labor pool and produce some uh, textiles. I'll just use up the rest of our labor pool for that. Which should give us two turns of uh, producing textiles. Okay. So, a nice little profit. Farmer reporting for duty. Um, nothing particularly interesting there. A mechanical pasta maker. What times we live in. Um... Just keep prospecting. I think you can... Can you prospect the marches as well? I'll have to double check that. Should we rescind the orders? No, I think it's just... Okay, again, Imperialism 2 doing things slightly differently. So Imperialism 2 lets you prospect marches... Uh, marches even. So... Um... Okay, I don't think we have the technology to improve these tiles yet, but we can improve orchards and farmland basically so it might have even been a little bit premature but i guess seeing as we've got the farmer now we might as well use them great power of uh mekatara lat has more than twice our merchant cargo space we might actually want to build an indiaman um well we don't have any oh we're still producing clothes so, uh, yeah, we need to stockpile for maybe a turn and build a small... Now, we might as well build a, a, an Indiaman and just double our cargo space. So the game will warn you if, if other nations are, are significantly pulling ahead of you. So that's fine. That's all... Uh... Oh, why are we not producing furniture? There we go. Maybe because we were... Uh... We have another trade school. No, it's the Tis the capital. So we have two new units of labour, maybe, or even if we, if if we even have one and just kind of, I'll get it eventually and just bump everyone up. But we don't have any spare labour there. So. Um. Anyway. So. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. We'll keep offering. Furniture for now. Price is actually going up slightly. Okay. We do need more merchant space, but I mean, we're not actually trading a lot of stuff at the moment, so. Furniture sold. Um. repeats there nothing specially interesting the, the demo of imperialism too yeah i i think it was on they had various um like i i, I think various magazines and whatever back when you used to get demo discs with with computer magazines i think a lot of them i, I think imperialism 2 was fairly widely kind of distributed because i remember playing it on mac briefly on somebody's um with, with like one of those demo discs uh what was i doing we were going to train up no no it is trade school um we're going to train up one of those to be a, uh, a skilled labor guy and then we're going to train up and spend a bit of cash and make one into an expert worker so that's fine so um yeah but we do yeah steel still the bottleneck we might actually have to spend some cash and just bring in some uh steel or whatever so we, okay we don't have enough for another oh wait no there's the relationship map okay so we've got very good relationship with them so could we um does that cost us anything? Can we uh, we can maybe propose to bring them into the empire. Uh, we can offer non-aggression pacts. Oh, we can only do that with embassies. 
Um, alliances are only great powers. Okay, should we try? Should we just try Empire? Or maybe we need to... No, actually, let's just try it. Let's see what happens. If we offer to make them part of glorious KV Foria. And their answer was no. I think it might it might take a little while long because it's only been three years since we started the game. So, uh, keep prospecting and we were going to build a depot across there, weren't we? So, uh, what's the... probably from there is the quickest. So, we've got our first iron ore that's going to be coming in. Um, he can just not do anything. No orders this turn. So we only need, you can actually mouse over there, so we, can, we only need five, but I think we need, we only need two. So we're actually, we're going to only transport what we need. So two iron ore, and we can now start transporting some wool as well. So we're also going to need some capacity for, um, for uh, getting some coal, so what we'll do. Steel mill industry with capacity more than double hours. That's because they've been upgrading and they've probably got iron and I'm lagging behind a bit because I haven't played this in absolutely donkeys. Um, so let's bid on coal. And the labour pool's looking alright at the moment. But we're going to, I think cloth is going to, yeah we're not going to make any, be able to make any more cloth because we're only getting in one. Um, unit of cotton at the moment but if we can if we can just like get the minimum that we need because I think two coal um, we'll be able to make two steel per turn and oh and then we can start upgrading um, although we might need to hold back on what's the stockpile we might need to hold back on making furniture for a turn maybe And we're not off of furniture, but uh, we'll sell another one of the tools because the price for those is now 1300. Those are in high demand, clearly. Demo discs, I know it's 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 kind of nostalgic, right? Even a lot of games don't even have demos these days. You can still get some, but everything's moved so much to digital platforms that the concept of a demo disc is just so massively archaic. Um, I think these are all existing. I've oh, seen all those before. No new headlines there. So we'll uh, build a cross, we'll build a depot there, and once again the miner doesn't have anything to do. Um, I mean I guess we might as well have the farmer does that? I think it's just the immediately surrounding tiles, so that one won't count. I think I prefer the Imperialism 2 system a bit more, where it's just you build, it's everything that's one tile away from a railroad. Having to build depots, well they're expensive and then you end up with very awkward overlaps where you might have to build an expensive depot for like one resource, for example. So, um, yeah. It's not super ideal. Right, warehouse. Apparently nobody was selling coal. Because nobody offered us coal. Unless I missed that in the trade screen. So we're starting to accumulate some iron ore though. But we actually do need coal. Uh, and we need to, we're going to just accumulate some lumber as well. Maybe upgrade like the lumber mill, for example. We need to start upgrading industries too. Right, is anybody offering... Sold, bought. Why isn't it letting me... There are nations offering. But maybe it just all got bought before I got a chance to buy any? I don't know. Anyway. Um... Yeah, why aren't we... I don't know. Why aren't we bidding on coal? I'm not sure. We should be able to buy coal, but... 
It's not letting me. Also, apparently the price of lumber has shot up, but it's still not uh, still not that exciting. Still not that good. So, um, okay. Well, two of three of our neighbours are trading with us as the preferred partner. Um, oh, we can't build railroads into... Ha! Huh. Okay, we can't build railroads. Uh, I don't think we have the technology yet to, to build them into hills and mountains. Which I think you just start with by default in um, in uh, uh, Imperialism 2. In a lot of ways, I'd prefer to be playing Imperialism 2 right now, but... Yeah, it actually says there, so hills, mountains, not available yet. And we can't even build a depot there to collect the coal, which is super annoying. Uh, can we? Do we have the technology to build a port? So we can't even connect this town via railroad. Yeah, it can't, it's, it's, it's kind of limiting right now. Um, we could like build a depot there and collect that bit of coal, but... Okay, let's send the engineer down there and maybe we can build a port. Because you can kind of have internal trade. At least in Imperialism 2 you can have interior uh, trade via the sea. And have port capacity. And talking of port capacity, we're going to build an Indiaman, so we'll do that. Right, so this is all this is all like steel. We need steel. We need steel production to be able to progress things any further, basically. Oh, here we go, someone's offering coal. Um two units of coal for one hundred and twenty six per unit. Excellent. Actually, um Oh, it was literally the only two units being sold, so or being offered. So our merchant capacity is doubled, excellent. And I don't think there's anything particularly silly there or new. Duplicating system tested. They've invented carbon paper, you guys. Um, now we, we appear to not be getting very lucky in terms of, of resources. We've found one copper and two coal, which is not terrible, but... Right, oh. No, I want, I, I want, the, I want the prospector. Next unit, there we go. Port 3000 does not require connecting rail and provides a uh, additional fish. So we'll build a port and I think theoretically that we can then connect up with the depot and we can start bringing coal in as well. So once again the miner has nothing to do. Um, why can't I play the second one? Jack Tank, um, it basically... Uh, I don't know if it's to do with how OBS, uh, not OBS, um, GOG has kind of made it compatible with modern operating systems, but for, for this one clearly they've just put in, you know, a background. And then you've got the actual game window in the middle. But Imperialism 2, um, it resizes your screen, and so it, it takes it down to like 640 by 480 or whatever it is, it's not big. And um, it, it doesn't have this surround, so it's not actually 1080. So on OBS, what it looks like is you've got the game window up in this corner and then everything else is black, which looks really terrible. Not that this looks, you know, super amazing, but at least it's centered. And you can, if, if you're full screen, you're basically seeing what I'm seeing. But uh, yeah. So, um... We can have, oh, not metal work, steel mail. We can actually have two units of steel produced. And then we will maybe either put that into the rail yard. In fact, I think we probably will put that into the rail yard and uh, increase our capacity a little bit. Oh, actually, no. How much does that cost to upgrade? Two units of steel, two lumber. We might actually upgrade the lumber mill because um, we can... We've got more lumber available um, uh, and uh, we'll be able to increase that industry a bit more than we will our iron industry. So, no offers of coal that time. Bird history published. Thomas Berwick, Berwick, I'm not even sure, has completed his much anticipated history of British birds. 
which might be an actual thing, I don't know. At its unveiling before the Society of uh, Avians annual meeting, Mr. Bewick, Buick, I don't even remember, there's about four different pronunciations by now, was awarded the Medal of the Wing, the Society's highest honour. <laughs> Members enjoyed a spirited discussion of Mr. Bewick's book while dining on roast chicken, turkey, pheasant, quail, grouse, pigeon, robin, and hummingbirds. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, we're really striking out in terms of um, coal and iron, which is going to hurt us later on if we, oh, if we, um, you know, stick with it that long, which I might not. We'll see. Right. Um, is there any other bits of, I guess we'll develop that one there because that will be connected by a depot, theoretically. Buick? Like the car? I, I don't... I don't know. I have no idea. No clue. Uh, right, so we've produced our two units of iron that we can produce at the moment, so we're going to um, dump labour into that and actually... Oh, no, well... Oh, we do need the extra transport capacity, but we also need... You know what, we'll do that for now, because we'll, we'll need to be able to actually ship the extra timber. And at that point we could maybe, you know, start producing some paper and making paper. But we do need the extra transport capacity, basically. And we'll just have to hope that somebody sold, uh, sells us some more coal, which hopefully they will. New technologies! This is the first of the new technologies, the cotton gin. Uh, inventor Eli Whitney has perfected a new way to process raw cotton. So we can upgrade cotton farms now, basically. So how much is this going to cost? Because there usually is a cost. It's only a thousand, so we'll do that. But we're going to need to start sell, selling some stuff. So transport orders. Got two extra units of capacity. Excellent. Um, still no steel because no one sold us any. Could try directly buying some steel, but it's pretty expensive. Um... We also now have enough to start producing furniture again and offering furniture on the market. Because we do need to get some money in, basically. Yeah, our, our rankings are slipping. I'm probably completely missing the growth curve here. My military's down to good. My industry's struggling badly. I think if you get too weak, people will just start declaring war on you. Right. Um, yeah, we can't do anything with the uh, the miner that just spends a lot of time doing not a lot. I ever played Banished? Yeah, I've played Banished. Um, it's actually, I think it's a, uh, there's a video of, of uh, me playing Banished on the channel way back, back when it came out. Banished is alright. It's quite a nice little game, but it doesn't have a particularly grand scope. Um, but, I don't know, Modders did some interesting things with Banished. They did kind of expand upon it a bit. So it's one of those games where the base game is okay, it's a nice little game, but again it's all about hitting growth curves and not failing, because if you fail, you can fail pretty catastrophically. Um, but yeah, it, it's modders that have kind of expanded it to be a bit more than it, than it really was. So we've sold one furniture, and there's the cotton gin. Um, I don't think there's any... No. People growing taller? <laughs> Actually, that's slightly amusing. According to statistics registered with the Bureau of Weights and Measures, people of KV4 are taller this century than ever before. This reporter finds that if the rate of increase continues into the next century, by the year 2000, the average human height will be 9 feet 4 inches. So that that's actually quite funny because reporters are notoriously bad when it comes to interpreting, you know, statistics and scientific studies and they're like, Ooh, gold! Gold is nice. Gold is basically direct income to the treasury. So we're definitely going to want to develop that. So we'll, we'll build a depot up. We'll build a depot like there, maybe, and then we'll build another depot probably there. Which is a bit awkward having two that close together, but gold we definitely want to have. 
So we can immediately go and have our miner develop that gold seam. And we can now get, uh, having built that port. Okay, so we, it, it is still down to transport capacity. There's no kind of separate sea transport capacity as there is in Imperialism 2. So we're now producing um, enough lumber that we could start producing paper alongside um, uh, the, the lumber. I keep saying lumber when I mean timber, but we can, we can sell paper at that point, basically. So yeah, we need, either need someone to sell some coal or some, some, some steel directly. I think we'll just stick with coal. And if we're patient, we'll get there ourselves, but we're definitely falling behind a bit in that regard. So that's going to be the first thing that we upgrade, is the lumber mill. Um... No, I don't think there's any, uh... <laughs> well, this is rather, uh, jingoistic editorial. Those naysayers who question the right of our great empire of KV4 to expand and prosper, or to take heed of recent survival theories. <laughs> so, you know, might makes right. Yeah, definitely. Sounds about right for this kind of era. So, um... I guess we'll develop that one as well. I think, if I remember correctly for imperialism, you need a separate rancher. You can't just use the farmer to upgrade, you know, these. So you actually need, like, a separate rancher. But I don't know if we have that available yet. Uh, trade school, university. Yeah, we don't have the rancher, but the rancher will become unlocked over time. So we can't actually produce any more food for the time being. I think our canned food supply is actually uh, running maybe a little bit low. No, we, we need more fish. So you need, yeah, you need two grain, one produce, and one meat to make two canned food, but we don't have the meat. We are getting one fish per turn, or we should be. Oh, no. There we go. We can actually increase that. Oh, we can't increase that because we don't have the transport capacity. Ah, uh, we need, we need more. We need more. We need to be getting more. <laughs> Well, that was cogent. Um, so yeah, we actually we've run into transport capacity issues there. So we, we need steel, we need iron, and we need well we need coal and we need uh, steel. So actually, let's see if anyone will sell us some steel. Um, can we sell any other thing? Don't think we can really. We maybe could sell some iron ore for a couple of turns which isn't going to get us much in but any cash is useful because at the moment the iron ore is just kind of accumulating because we don't have any coal to also make steel so let's see if anyone will yeah some people okay there we go we've sold some um Okay, <laughs> this, is, this is articles about since our empire began expanding, but that's not it's not really happened at all. I don't think there's been any major wars or anything. Kind of reminds me of World Trading Company. Um, I mean, I suppose the yeah, there's a, there is quite heavy uh, emphasis on um, the economic element, industrialization. So um, as I mentioned earlier, you know, another similar-ish game that's that's come along later. That also has a heavy emphasis on that is Victoria 2. But well, I suppose the original Victoria probably did as well. But that has a, a much more detailed but fundamentally also quite flawed um, economic model. Which is it, it's kind of interesting, Victoria 2, because it's Paradox, like people keep asking Paradox to make uh, a Victoria 3, and Paradox themselves have said they, they kind of don't want to because. Um, the person that designed the economic model for, for Victoria 2, uh, I don't think has worked there for a while. And the actual closed box of the economy in Victoria 2, because the game tries to simulate an entire world economy with a whole host of different traded and manufactured goods. But it's got all kinds of holes in it. 
So stuff kind of falls out of the game all the time. Um, it kind of leaks away and nobody knows where. Nobody knows, you know, what the fault in the code is. So, um, yeah, it's always it's always been kind of known that uh, it, it, it's, it's nice in theory, but uh, it's really difficult to make a game that accurately kind of models as a closed box, a global economy. So, um... I guess we'll keep offering that because we've still got that stockpile of a dozen. We'll keep offering two per turn. But I guess everybody else is just also in the market for buying things. So, yeah, we can't really afford another embassy at the moment. Okay, sold two iron ore. Made a little bit of a profit. Wow, this is truly the future. Pens more mighty than swords. A factory newly established at the capital of Caviforia produces a pen containing ink and a hollow tube. This innovation relieves the need to dip pens in ink wells. It's rumoured that the capacity for production of armaments will be cut due to the demand for the new pens. <laughs> well, obviously the inkwell industry will never stand for it. I'm, I'm sure they'll be lobbying the, uh, the legislators to to restrict this new industry. Right, did we, was it there I thought maybe? No, because we need it to include that, that coal basically. So I think it was, yeah, I guess there, it's not quite optimal. But anyway, so that's that gold seam developed. Um, once again, we need, just steel. Steel is absolutely our bottleneck right now. Uh, can we can we build any military ships whatsoever? No, we don't have... We could build a frigate if we had steel with which to make weapons, but we don't. So, that's that. I have a feeling this game's probably going to go horribly, but, you know, this is me playing a game I haven't played in absolutely ages. Ooh! Vid offers, offers four units of steel. I think we'll do it, even though that is going to... Okay, actually, that's not too bad. We did sell furniture, so we didn't lose that many per turn for, for that turn. New technology available. Um, square set timbering, which will let coal mines, I think, and iron mines be upgraded. Excellent. Uh, also, we've had two great powers forming an alliance, I think. Maybe I should be trying to form an alliance with somebody. I don't know. Oh, oh, excellent. More, more iron. Right, so if I build that depot there, that brings in horses, some, uh, yeah, okay, so that's, that's worth having. So we're finally going to be having coal and iron production. Also, how much for square set timbering? I think just the ability to upgrade even the mines we do have connected. Um, it's a bit expensive, but I think we'll do it. So, we'll upgrade our lumber mill, which will happen next turn. Um, we also need to be transporting more food, which we will need to upgrade our transport capacity. So we'll get another two units of transport capacity, basically. And we'll keep offering iron ore for another couple of turns because it's just a little bit of extra cash. So we're kind of starting to run out of money now. <laughs> but we're also getting maybe a little bit more movement in terms of um, what's available. Right. Um, I guess we'll develop that, that particular square because we'll want a depot around here somewhere. Maybe there. It's a pity I can't, because um, that depot's there, we can't then put a depot, like, it's not collecting that, that coal, but anyway, we'll have to wait. It's all going to be very awkward in terms of placement. Um, we'll take it. We'll take two units of steel this time, just because uh, we are starting to run out of cash a bit. And we only sold two iron ore, we didn't sell any furniture. So, excellent, we can upgrade our mines. Um, uh, that's going to be very, very useful. Right, so we do need to 
be transporting a bit more food because we can't actually yeah we're, ne we're not getting any surplus at the moment for these things so um, we're only transporting what's needed so I'll actually I guess transport one of those and then yeah we just we need more more transport capacity we need more everything and because we got those two, we'll, we'll again put that into the transport capacity because hopefully we'll have coal to transport very soon, at which point, and we've got, I think, the, the spare labour. Um, right, we're transporting six timber. We could maybe put some labour into... Do we want to put it more into... And we could put it into lumber and stockpile lumber a bit, which we might need to do. Or we could, we don't have any paper. We'll, we'll put it into lumber for now. So we're producing, we're, we're kind of at capacity in terms of we're producing, we're transporting six per turn and then we're going to use all six of that. So we're actually going to be uh, accumulating a little stockpile of lumber, which is good. And then maybe we can start making some canned food next turn, but we also need the extra transport capacity because we're going to be having coal available very, very soon. Uh, um, oh, we're, we're losing influence. We'll have to give them extra trade subsidies or something. I don't know. It's because I can't give them any um, subsidies directly. Um, it's it's a bit, you know, annoying. We're starting to run low on money, which is slightly a problem. So we'll stop bidding on steel and coal. And we'll keep offering... Our prices for tools are very, very high. Nearly 1,600. But we'll hold on to the two we've got for the time being. <laughs> hey, Katrina. Is there a limit to prospecting? Um, I mean, you, once you've prospected the entirety of your borders, that's it. The prospector becomes useless. Uh, Imperialism 2 you could only find, yeah, there were certain goods you can only get from the New World. So there was a, an incentive to go and, um, um, you know, conquer or make nice with the natives, as the case may be. So, a bit more profit. The Katare Lat forms alliance with Runoltetsky. Uh, we should, oh, more gold, excellent. Should probably. Uh, that's not somewhere we can actually develop, though. We can't build a depot that can get at that gold at the moment, which is slightly annoying. Um, right. Can we. No, coal's not showing up yet. I think we're still building that depot. So we'll actually. Um, oh, I don't know. What's stockpile food for a little bit for a turn or two. Um, I really wish I had more cash to throw at these people. Could I propose an alliance with uh, a major power? I don't know. <laughs> Just randomly do it. Most of them are fairly neutral towards me. No, actually that's not going to work, is it? Because uh, people weren't really good enough. So I'm totally failing at the diplomatic game right now. I'm struggling to get my industry up to scratch. And a bit more. Okay, we're starting to do a little bit better in terms of resources. So we should. Aha! We should still. We should now have. Wait, how do we not have coal available? From that depot. I'm slightly confused. We should have coal available from that depot. Right, we'll send the miner there to upgrade that. Farmer doesn't need to upgrade anything this turn. Why? Why not let me select that? I don't know. We'll build that there. That, can we not click on the depot to see what the depot is collecting? Oh, it's saying the depot's not connected? Even though... Ah! 
I kind of assumed that connecting that depot to a port would work, because that would be logical. But apparently that isn't how imperialism works. So that's kind of annoying. Ports don't work that way. I think ports just give you fish. And also I think ports can be used for ships to use as well. Ha! Huh, okay. Well, that was me thinking we'd get some coal out of that, but never mind. That's really annoying. So we're going to have to keep bidding on coal, basically. Because there's no way for me to connect up the... Like, I can't build railways over hills at the moment. That's really annoying. Okay, never mind. So, um... It's not a lot for me to do except advance the next turn. More coal? So there's all these bits... Up the, there's, there's this range of, of hills and mountains here that separates the western part of the country from the eastern part. And apparently we just can't get any of these resources over there until I get the technology to put railways across. Um, yeah, that's really annoying. So I can actually build up the rail network, I just can't connect the two bits of the rail network yet. Um, yeah. I'm a little bit unimpressed with that. That's not particularly good game design, but never mind. I mean, I think that is something they did in Imperialism 2, that you could use ports so that you don't have to have a unified rail network. Um, which, you know, that makes more sense. Um, the Settlers series, yeah, that's been around for donkeys. That's all about economic development as well. But it's less about... Um, it's more like... I don't know, the, the scale is different in the settlers. It's more about building up chains. Industry chains. And logistics. This 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 game was meant to be like a blend of warfare and all the all the rest of it. A bit of diplomacy, a bit of warfare, a bit of economics, a bit of trade. So in some ways it's a forerunner of some of the, the, the paradox games and other games that we've had later. Other strategy games. Uh, new technology available, streamlined hulls. I think everybody's after steel at the moment, so it's probably why I'm not having any luck buying any coal. Very particular amounts of steel. So I can build... Clippers! I don't think we'll invest in that technology, though. Just because we are... Um, really kind of struggling to... <laughs> I hope we get the technology for... for yeah, so the resource depot, so that depot is correctly placed, it's just, I just noticed there's a little red flag instead of a little green flag. I've got no way to connect it. I have no way to connect it, that's kind of infuriating. Anyway, so, um... I could maybe connect up these two towns. Actually, no, I don't even think we can, I don't think I can build railroads through swamp at the moment. I could connect this town here by railroads, and we could then have a depot coming off that later. I think railroads can also be used by military units to move around quicker, I think. I don't know for sure. Might as well redeploy that guy down there then. We won't spend the 2,000 building a depot there just yet. So this is... I'm, I'm just absolutely, like, hamstrung by this lack of... Um, like, nobody wants to sell coal, and I can't get the coal that I have. It's really irritating. Because I've got this, because I built this depot here, which is fine for, for these surrounding resources, but it means I can't get that coal. And I, I, is there any way I can, oh, didn't mean to do that. Is there any way I can, like, can I destroy a depot? I don't think I can. I think once a depot is built, that's it. It's a slight limitation of this game. Right, we're slipping behind militarily as well. I mean, we could maybe try building another military unit, except I don't know if we can. I don't think we have any weapons because we can't get any steel. <laughs> steel is proving to be a bit of a bottleneck. So I'm just, I don't know. 
we're slipping behind as an imperial power more gold excellent but you know we can't do anything with it which is not so excellent right so we can now um transport even more iron so we could actually maybe sell more iron we're trying to get a slight surplus for food, so we can actually maybe try and sell like three iron per turn. Um, God, we could also really maybe do with another merchant ship. We can build a small merchant, a trader. We don't have the capacity to... So we're stockpiling cotton. Do we need... Yeah, we're only getting one cotton per turn, so it's, um... We can produce wool for a little bit, or we can produce fabric for a little bit, but not for a, a huge amount of time. So we can actually set fabric production going. And we can build another Indiaman, maybe. Which might be quite useful. Anyway, so we've upgraded this, uh, this mine here, but there's no point in spending the money upgrading any of the other mines at the moment, because we can't connect them. Which is infuriating! So maddening. I mean, they, they did improve a lot of things for imperialism too. I mean, the, the core of the game was the same, but they made a lot of minor improvements. So if you were going to buy either of those from GOG, I mean, I just kind of bought both of them together because I thought, why not? It was going to be like £8. But if you were going to buy either one of these, I would say get imperialism too. Because it, 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 it's just a little bit more refined, a little bit more streamlined. It makes a little bit more sense. I'm actually thinking of, what does the chat say? We've been going for for about an hour and a half with this. I'm actually thinking this might be a good time to wrap this up and maybe go and um, play some warships instead. Um, Max Kelt, I have prospected, like you can see the... all the everything. This has all been prospected out, so there's no anything else to discover around here. So what say you, chat? Should we swap over to some warships? I could save this and maybe come back to it or not. I don't know. Um, there's a lot of stuff in the later game that it gets a bit more interesting, but I think I'd have to... I'd almost have to go away and just play it and uh, re-familiarise myself and try and hit that growth curve correctly. Because I don't think I have. But I think I've also gotten a little bit unlucky in terms of resources and the terrain. And also... I could have placed this depot better in retrospect and actually got on that coal, which would have made life so much easier. It's that one decision because I didn't know that I couldn't put a depot there until I'd already put that depot there. But that one decision's kind of screwed me a bit. Yeah, I think we'll do that then. We'll um, we'll save this game because why not? But I probably won't come back and play this particular. Um, there we go, save game. Select a slots. So, um, I shall throw up the togs while we switch the game. And um, I'll also, I think I'll put this as a separate VOD up on YouTube as well. So, uh, yeah, just, just for the benefit of, of, of YouTube, um, you can buy this and Imperialism 2 on GOG.com. Might be available in other places, but... Um, one of the advantages of getting it from there is, as I said at the start, it, it will run on modern OSs. And also, it, it comes with a couple of extras. So you actually get the manuals, I think, in PDF form. And you also get the soundtrack for both games, which we've not really heard too much of while we've been playing. Uh, and it's not like it's a, a massive soundtrack. But, um, yeah, you get them in both MP3 and a lossless format as well is quite a nice touch from GOG. So yeah, it's just a, it's, it's, it's a nice site to buy stuff from anyway.